Hi, I'm Diana DeRosa, and I am speaking with Joni Whitworth, who lives in Portland, Oregon, and was the writer of the experimental short film To Eat With Her Hands. Joni, I just loved the images and videos that were part of this sort of speaking um, poetry that you, you've done here. And I'd love for you to talk to the people watching us now about your vision of what you will portray. Sure, yeah. So I'm primarily a poet and filmmaking is quite new to me. It's not my go-to or chosen medium or something that I've studied much. So it's really wonderful to be allowed to play and experiment, especially during COVID with new forms. And a lot of my writing has uh, been about um, food and class and often food and class are closely intertwined. In To Eat With Her Hands, I'm trying to explore the nuances of also how a queer love story can be set in those issues and how for me as a queer person when I'm experiencing a relationship and having a love story often food and class wind themselves into that relationship, whether or not that is consensual, if that makes sense. The, you know, obviously meals are a place that we gather and create relationships around and together. And um, the implications of, of class on a real relationship, especially a queer relationship, can really affect um, where it's headed and the memories that are made and shared in that space. So that's one of the takeaways um, is not much of a conclusion, but rather a bit of a question about um, how people value uh, these memories um, and how they catalog memories. Thank you so much for explaining that. That, that really, I think, that's what we need. We see this film and then we want to see your vision and hear what you have to say because we can take away our thoughts. So anytime you put together any type of film, whether it's the writer or the, the filmmaker or what have you, it takes time. You know, it's yeah. not just a matter of reading it and it's over. So after this whole project now finished and you can visually see it, what is your takeaway? What's the thing that sticks with you? Well, something that really stuck with me is just the the value of collaboration. So I, in this project, um, I handed over a lot of the, um, you know, archival footage, sourcing and editing, and also the music over to my friend Amelia, also known as Meals, um, who worked on putting together the um, accompaniment for my spoken word performance. And so I think um, a takeaway from the art making process side is just to really trust your collaborators and um, let them run with their vision and have fun. But it also showed me if, if I had a specific like visual direction I wanted it to go, that it's important to communicate that early. And, um, and, and I'm, I'm still learning to kind of um, form the, the visual language of how to say my ideas because I'm used to in poetry, just writing all of my ideas down and it's okay if they're, you know, uh, a bit like whimsical or they don't have to be completely understood in a explicit terms. Whereas when you're collaborating with somebody, they do ideally need to understand you quite explicitly. So yeah, it was a, it was a growing process and a growing project for me. Um, so that's about the process. And then in terms of the thematic, you know, concepts that I'm exploring with love and especially lost love, um, this piece does speak about the end of a relationship and how hard that can be. One takeaway around that is that the writing, both the initial writing and then the, the making of the final product product and the project as you see it now to either hands the short film uh, can be quite healing I you know when I wrote that poem I was in a state of extreme grief and now it's been a couple of years and I'm in very small grief about it and I, I like to demonstrate to my community that that kind of healing is possible and I think one of the things you said is so true that communication is very important 
One of the things I'd like you to sort of outline is the message of the ballet. Ooh, okay. Well, so this is actually, okay, it's a little bit of a tie-in to this whole long other story I have that is a, a true um, autobiographical short story. Um, it doesn't have a movie quite yet, but it has been published in a couple of publications as an essay or as a short story um, that talks about um, this certain ballet teacher I had, and it's also about food and queerness and class. It's, a, it's kind of a companion piece. Um, <laughs> so the, the ballet is definitely a bit of a nod to that other piece. I'm hoping to kind of tie my works together over time, um, especially because I'm really only exploring like a few main issues in all of my art. <laughs> um, I'm not one of these creatives who's like all over the map. I have I have basically like four or five main interests that I'm making art about. So um, that that is kind of like the the inside or like secret uh, tie-in. But then I think I think the more um, the one that can be culturally connotative and recognizable to anyone who sees it is that ballet is. Um, uh, as it is taught in America, it can be quite harmful. Um, a lot of aspiring ballerinas become anorexic. There's a lot of um, food and class issues steeped in that kind of European practice and the way that we've formalized it and the way that we've shepherded it over generations. Um, and so it's a bit of a call out, I guess, of ballet spaces. Wow, you know, it's interesting because when I first started to watch this and knew that the title was Tea With Our Hands, I was wondering about that connection with the ballet and anorexia and all of that. So it's interesting that you explain it that way. So we've come to the end of our little conversation here. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we say goodbye? Yeah, I just would love to say that, you know, I'm an emerging filmmaker. These projects are quite new to me and I'm so, um, hoping for and welcoming all all kinds of feedback. If something was resonant for you in seeing this piece, or if you have any questions or critiques, I really would love to hear about them. All of my social media information, I'm sure will be linked, but you can find me all over the internet, um, Joni Whitworth. And I'd be happy to, to chat about the piece or also share and compare pieces. Well, Joni Whitworth, to eat with our hands, well done.